Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time we'll be asking questions about the 12 disciples. The first question worth 100 points. Which disciple was a tax collector? Was it A. Matthew, B. Jude, C. Bartholomew, or D. Matthias? The answer is A. Matthew was the disciple who was a tax collector. The next question for 200 points. Who were the first two disciples to be called? Was it A. Peter and Andrew, B. Matthias and Matthew, C. Jude and Bartholomew, or D. Thomas and Philip? The answer is A. The first two disciples to be called were Peter and Andrew. The next question for lots and lots of points. Which disciple tried to walk on water like Jesus? Was it A. Thomas, B. Peter, C. Matthew, or D. Jude? The answer is B. Peter was the disciple who tried to walk on water like Jesus. The next question for a half a point. Which disciple was known as the Zealot? Was it A. Simon, B. Thomas, C. Judas, or D. Matthias? The answer is A. Simon was the disciple known as the Zealot. The next question for 500 points. Which disciple betrayed Jesus? Was it A. Thomas, B. Philip, C. Judas, or D. Bartholomew? The answer is C. Judas was the disciple who betrayed Jesus. The next question for a supercalifragilistic number of points. Which of these persons was not one of the twelve disciples? Was it A. Matthew, B. Andrew, C. Mark, or D. John? The answer is C. Mark was not one of the twelve disciples. The next question for 1,000 points. What did Jesus do to each disciple during the Last Supper? Was it A. Washed their feet? B. Hugged them? C. Gave them gifts? Or D. Washed their hair? The answer is A. During the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of each disciple. The next question for a dozen points. Which disciple looked after Mary after Jesus' death? Was it A. Thomas, B. John, C. Peter, or D. Andrew? The answer is B. John looked after Mary after Jesus' death. The next question for 800 points. Which disciple denied Jesus three times? 
Was it A, Peter, B, Thomas, C, Andrew, or D, Bartholomew? The answer is A. Peter was the disciple who denied Jesus three times. And the last question for double your current points. What did Jesus send two disciples to fetch on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Was it A. Palm leaves, B. A horse, C. A donkey and colt, or D. Food? The answer is C. Jesus sent two disciples to fetch a donkey and colt on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. It's time for Bible Trivia. This time we'll be asking general Bible trivia questions. The first question, for 100 points. What is the first book in the Bible? Is it A, Genesis, B, Judges, C, Exodus, or D, Leviticus? The first book in the Bible is Genesis. Next for 300 points. How many books are in the Bible? Is it A 72, B 60, C 66, or D 52? That's right, there are 66 books in the Bible. Next question. This one is for 400 points. How many books are in the New Testament of the Bible? Is it A32, B30, C25, or D27? There are 27 books in the New Testament of the Bible. The next question, also for 400 points. How many books are in the Old Testament? Is it A42, B39, C44, or D37? There are 39 books in the Old Testament of the Bible. The next question for 1,000 points. What is the longest book in the Bible? Is it A, Psalms, B, Proverbs, C, Numbers, or D, Song of Solomon? That's right, the longest book in the Bible is the book of Psalms. The next question for one million points. What is the shortest book in the Bible? Is it A, Job, B, 3 John, C, Luke, or D, Amos? The shortest book in the Bible is 3rd John. 
the next question for one billion points. Which gospel is written by a doctor? Is it A, Matthew, B, Luke, C, John, or D, Mark? The book of Luke was written by a doctor. The next question for just four points. What does Genesis mean? A. Origin B. Creation C. Seven Days or D. In the Beginning The word Genesis means origin. Next question for infinity points. Who is the first woman mentioned in the Bible? Is it A, Sarah, B, Ruth, C, Esther, or D, Eve? The first woman mentioned in the Bible is Eve. Now for our last question, worth a bunch of points. Which of these is not a book in the New Testament? Is it A, 1 Corinthians, B, 3 John, C, 2 Thessalonians, or D, 3 Peter? Third Peter is not a book in the New Testament. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon.
Did you have a child to graduate in 2021? Please drop their names. Please email Pastor Payne. Let us know so that we can celebrate with you and your child. Hi, my name is Mashanti McKenzie. I am the guest pastor today. I don't really need an introduction or I don't really need to introduce myself since Jerusalem United Methodist Church is my home church. And Jerusalem United Methodist is the church that I was birthed out of, uh, that I grew out of, uh, that I grew up in. <laughs> um, so, but I am your guest pa- um, pastor today and I, it is a privilege to be amongst you. So if you are in the uh, face, on, if you are on Facebook, Say hey, greet everybody. Say hello to each other. Uh, if you if you are at home and you're listening, hey, this is me saying hey to you. Uh, if you are are watching now and in the chat, say hey. <laughs> we just want to get in. We just want to greet each other. We just want to be on the same page. Let us pray. God, we love you. God, we adore you. God, we are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful that we woke up this morning in our right mind. God, we are thankful that we are uh, we have the ability to get up and get on Zoom, God. We God, we we thank we thank you for having the common sense to 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 connect to you. God, we we thank you for allowing us to be our authentic self, so to be who you call us to be. God, we, we, we thank you for whom you are in our lives. God, we thank you. God, God, we, we say a prayer for those who cannot connect today. God, God, we say a prayer for those who, who don't have access like we have access. God, God we, we stop for a moment for what we are doing to say hallelujah, 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 God. God, God, God we understand that if it wasn't for you and your power and for, from you and your, your wisdom, God, we wouldn't be here today. So God, thank you. God, as I pray this prayer and as I preach this message, God, be with those who are listening, God. And, and pray to be with those who, who will re-listen, God. God, be with those people, God, because they are seeking you through me. God, we love you in your son Jesus' name. I do pray. Amen. 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 If you are in your homes, say hallelujah. If you are on Facebook and you have the capability of typing hallelujah, type hallelujah. If if, if you are uh, driving down the road, say hallelujah in your car. We just want to connect. We want to be on one accord. We want to be together in this in this time that we have together. We want to be intentional about asking the Holy Spirit to come in. Even though the Holy Spirit was already in the space, we just want to be intentional about saying, hey, we are here, Holy Spirit. And we are ready and re- willing to do what you ask us to do. And we are ready. We have, we have taken those things out of our minds and our hearts so that we can listen to what you have said, have to say to us today. So, so hallelujah on the count of three. Type and say. One, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. As I said in the beginning, my name is Reverend, at this moment, Reverend Mashaka T. McKenzie. And it is a pleasure to be your pastor today. It is a pleasure to bring the message today. The name of today's sermon is titled, It's On You. The title of today's sermon is titled, It's On You. And today's scripture comes from Mark 11, 24. And the word of God says, therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that, that you have received it and it will be yours. Today's 
to title today's sermon is, It Is Yours. I, I want to leave three things with you. What are you praying for? Do you believe in what you are praying for? And do you believe it's yours? All right, so, so, so Mark is saying that if we pray, believe, and we receive. You know, uh, we, we, we pray, we believe, we have to receive. It, it is on us to go through the process. Uh, it is on us to go through the process before I get above myself. Uh, um, one of my childhood movies, uh, favorite movies was called Angels in the Outfit. Uh, why I love this movie because it brought my two worlds together the love of God and the love of softball or slash baseball uh, um, uh, it, it brought my two worlds together the love of of God and the love of softball it, it brought those worlds together uh, um, watching angels playing baseball it was fascinating for me uh, watching watching a, um, a kid tell the adults that there's angels on the field that that was exciting for me uh, to, to see an uh, angel grab hold to the bat and, and the person hit a home run. That was exciting for me. Uh, God has angels on the field for us. God has ain't people um people believing and having faith and, and praying these miraculous prayers and they can come true. They can happen. They they are happening. Um, um I love angels in the house. Uh, even when we look at angels in the outfield for today's contact, God has angels on the field for us. Uh, God have angels that, that, that has, that's at the plate ready to hit a home run for us. Uh, God, God has things in place for us to go, but it's on what are you praying for? Um, uh, in that particular movie, um, Angels in the Outfield, the little boy prayed to God. It was like, God, let them win. Uh, the, the team that he was praying for was not a winning team. The team that, that the little boy had faith in wasn't a winning team. A lot of times we want to, to, to pray for things that we can already do. Um, well, sometimes we, we pray those easy prayers prayers or uh, that we don't we, we, we don't even challenge ourselves or because we know our weakness or, or we realize that we are afraid uh, but, the, but the little boy in the particular movie uh, angels in the outfield that we are currently talking about uh, he had this faith in in, in God in in the angel that they gonna win the pennant they they gonna win the, the championship they gonna win what is theirs <laughs> and that, but there was not a winning team but they had all the necessary things to become a winning team but they but they were not a current winning team let, let me say that one, one more time the angels in the outfield team that the little boy was praying for was not a winning team but however because of his prayer his his acts his request to God, to the and the angels was activated on on that prayer, and then that team became a winning team. Even down to the to the last scene of the movie, where where he believes uh, the team now believes in the angels and believe in believe in this miraculous thing that is happening. And, and the little boy throws up his arms and said, "Angel," but truth be told, there's no angel. The angels are gone, the, and the angels are no longer activated. It is on them to walk into what God has called them to. And so, so there's no angels helping him, but the little boy is giving him the faith, giving him, believing in him, pushing him forward, saying that you can do it, but he needs to believe that the angels are there. And so when he threw that last scroll and he realized that there was no angel, he jumped for joy. He was, he was excited. The, the, the audience was excited. Everybody was excited. What are you praying for? Have you activated your angels? Uh, um, I, I know that most of you good old Christians know about the story about, about how, how um, um, John the Baptist was born. Uh, and I know that you good Christians know that John the Baptist and Jesus are cousins. Uh, and, I, and I know those who have been in church for a while can link Mary and Elizabeth 
together. Uh, and I and I don't know that those who are who who have been in church for a while can 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 uh, link the stories from one to another. But but give this young pastor a moment to tell the story of Mary, Elizabeth, and Zachariah, Jesus, and John. <laughs> um, let me give me give me a moment and and i'm gonna tell you how their prayers were activated and how they went through the process and how they end up receiving what they prayed for now give me a moment to tell you that prayer uh and let me tell you about that prayer about that process um um, um, it was a woman by the name of elizabeth um elizabeth was a old sir woman uh, elizabeth had became older and you know at a certain age we don't believe that you can have kids or you should not have kids and so um but but zachariah still prayed um the prayer and zachariah and elizabeth are married they are together they are one they they are praying this prayer they want to, to be able to conceive a child they they, they are praying this prayer and I'll be dag, it happened. But but when it happened, it scared them. What are you praying for? Um, when when they their prayers was answered, they they became fearful. Let me let me be more specific. Zachariah became afraid. Um, and then when when his wife became pregnant, and the angel came back to him and said, "You must name your child John." And, and then then Zacharias had all these different things going on. And he was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. You know how we get, right? We get what we prayed for, but then we get content in what we prayed for, or we get scared because it's too much and too fast, uh, or we, we're not sure that God really called us, but we prayed for it. Uh, we know that God called to you, called me to this situation, but we didn't start questioning it because we start questioning ourselves. Um, but Zachariah had to do what he was told to do. He had to, to listen and name his son John. Uh, he had to do, he had to do, he had to follow through. He had to do what he was called to do. You have to do what you are called to do. It might have been a prayer that you prayed a long time ago. Sometimes we pray prayers when we were kids and they don't come to pass until we're good and grown. Zachariah prayed a prayer that didn't come true until he was good and old. But he had his child and he had to obey. His wife had to obey. When Mary and when Mary and Elizabeth met up, John jumped <laughs> as we pregnant people might um uh, know that he, she the baby kicked <laughs> the baby kicked elizabeth elizabeth said the baby jumped for joy the baby jumped for joy in the presence of mary and jesus what are you praying for what are you jumping for joy for are you going through the process what are you praying for uh, my point number two do you believe in what you are praying for? I believe Zachariah and 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 and, and, um, and Elizabeth believed, but they were surprised and afraid when their faithfulness came true. I I, I believe believe that they believe cold heartedly in what they was praying and preaching. But when it happened, it threw them off. Uh, and it's okay, y'all. It's okay to be thrown off. But what is not okay is for you to stop. No one gave you permission to stop. When you pray a prayer, God is already preparing the place for you. And so, so it's up to you to keep pushing forward, to keep moving forward, to, to continue to do that faithfulness, that, 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 that thing, whatever that thing is that God is calling you to do. You have to be faithful in what you pray for. You have to believe in what you pray for. I, I believe that, that I was going to be a pastor. I, I believe that I was greater than what people said I was. I, I believed in me if nobody else believed in me. 
I, I believed in me because it was important for me to go where I needed to go. And if nobody else was going with me, I was going by myself. Uh, if, if you have to go by yourself, baby, go by yourself. Go by yourself. Uh, do you believe in what you are praying for? If you don't believe in what you're praying for, I want you to challenge, I want to challenge you this week to write down the things that you are praying for and then ask yourself the question, do I actually believe that's going to happen? Do I actually believe that God is in that? Uh, do I actually believe that God can bring that to pass for me? Uh, if you are questioning anything that God can do, I need for you to write it down so you make it plain so that you can see what God can do. Because God is already ready because God is always present. Oh, God is always ready. God is, God is that best friend that when you call God up and if you ready, God are ready. So I'm challenging you this week to get ready to believe in what you are praying for, to trust the process, to believe that God is almighty, to believe that God is God, to believe that things will work out even if it does not look like it. What are you praying for? What are you believing? Are you believing in your prayer? Here's the last question. Um, um, do you believe it's yours? Do you believe it's yours? Do you believe that what you are praying for is yours? Uh, it's plain and simple right here in Mark. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, if you, if you pray it, believe that you've already received it. Are you praying things that you believe that you can receive? Are you praying for things that you believe in that you can receive? Um, I, I told you that my worlds came together with, with loving God and playing softball. But I, when I started off playing softball, I wasn't the best, I must say. It took a while. <laughs> um, but when I caught my first ball, I can remember saying, God, I just want to catch a ball. I want to be able to be like the boys. I want to be able to catch and throw and run and hit. But when I catch that first ball, I was like, John and Elizabeth Woon jumping for joy. Matter of fact, I didn't really know I had the ball, but, but I, when I realized I had what, uh, what I had caught the, the belief, I had finally grabbed hold to what God was telling me that, that it was mine. I was celebrating. Are you celebrating what is yours? Are you believing what you are praying for? Do you believe what God has called you to? I know y'all, this is a lot of questions, but it's important to ask questions so that you can get answers. It's, it's important to ask questions so that you can go to the next step. Sometimes we stay where we are because we are inquisitive or we stay where we are because it's comfortable or we stay where we are because nobody else is questioning where you are. I'm questioning where you are. Move forward. Do what God is asking you to do. Believe in what God has asked you to do. Because the kingdom of God is waiting for you. A lot of us can't move forward because you're stuck. A lot of us can't move forward because you won't move. A lot of us are stuck because you're stuck. A lot of the next generation is waiting for you to be your best. Matter of fact, the, this, the church is, has to move forward or the next generation is going to jump on another ship. Or they're just going to jump off like some of our ancestors did. We can't be stuck. We have, to, we have to pray a prayer, we have to believe it, and we have to receive it. We have to pray a prayer that we believe in and receive it. Uh, re remember, it's yours. It's yours. Zachariah and Mary got a baby. And when they got the baby, Mary and Elizabeth met up where, there, where John and Jesus in the womb met for the first time. And because Zachariah and uh, Zachariah and uh, Elizabeth listened to the angels, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. We are all linked together, y'all, but we got to do what God is calling us to do. Let us pray. God, we love you. God, we thank you. God, we understand that you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. And because of that alone, God, we're just going to trust 
in you. God, we understand that you are the reason why we are breathing at this moment, that we have oxygen going from our head to our toes. God, we understand right now is because of you that we are called, that we are walking in our calling. God, we understand right now that you are God and we are we are your kids. We are your women. You, we are your men. We are your children. We are your daughters. We are your sons. We are your uncles. God, we are yours. God, we understand that. God be with us. God be with us. God be with us. God be with us. God, for anybody who's listening, who don't know you, God, be wrap your arms around them right now. God, if there's anybody that's among us right now who wants to know you more, let them know that this is the place for them. God, we love you. God, we adore you. I pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.